Welcome, Josephites. Thank you for joining us for the Jana Spilke CV session. Today, we have guest speakers Sapna Karim and Pratna Ramesh from Janagraha, an NGO working on social impact, joining us from Bangalore to help us learn about transforming cities through active citizenship. Let's get started. Pratna and Sapna, could you tell us what is Janagraha and what is the mission? Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, it's wonderful to be speaking with you. Um, Ashwarya, can you pull up the presentation, please? Yes. So the reason, uh, I mean, just I'm sure many of you must be wondering why we have these five questions uh, up for you to answer. Uh, if you're looking at the uh, results of the poll, you will see that um, many of us uh, may not have known the name and number of the ward that we lived in or the name of the councillor, the mayor, the MLA. What agency actually provides you what service in its entirety? and even understanding the roles of the MLAs and the councillors and so on. So the good thing is, well, it only gets better as we try and do this uh, right now. And um, all of this pertains to our understanding of who we are as uh, citizens and what are the roles and responsibilities uh, that we have towards the city that we live in. So um, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what Janagraha does to start off with. Aishwarya, can you move on to the next slide? So Janagraha is, um, we're 18 years old. We launched in 2001. Uh, those of you who were in the city at that point, and maybe if you are just begun working, you would have, uh, and or if you were in college, you would have seen a lot of our um, campaigns and uh, I would say billboards and posters and a lot of uh, hoopla around some new initiative called citizens participation in budgets you know, that we started off with. So over the last 18 years, we have um, crystallized our mission and the work that we do. So we are fundamentally about transforming the quality of life in India's cities and towns. And how do we do that? We do that on two fundamental and critical aspects by making a measurable difference in the quality of citizenship and by making a measurable difference in the quality of infrastructure and services. And the way we do this is by working with citizens to catalyze active citizenship in neighborhoods and by working with government to institute reforms to city systems. It's, it is important for us to understand what city systems are because um, the reason is that it is in a particular context that the improvements to quality of citizenship and to the quality of infrastructure and services, which ultimately translates as governance in cities, will actually make sense you know, to all of us. Can we move on to the next slide? So let me quickly just walk you through what city systems uh, really mean. Right? Um, cities are world over, and most probably in many of the cities that you're living in uh, right now, you're experiencing a quality of life that maybe, and most probably is, based on a certain framework of thinking, planning, and implementation that has been running for many years, many decades, right? They consist of four key um, aspects. One is urban planning and design, wherein cities are thought of with a perspective and a vision for the future. What should Bangalore look like in 15 years and 20 years, right? And how quickly should we, and how often, should we keep looking at the design and the vision of Bangalore, depending on how it is organically growing and what economic growth means, what culture means, and what community really means. So which means that is a key aspect to really fixing the design of our cities. The second is on urban capacities and resources. Do our city governments actually have the money required to run our cities and run them efficiently? Do they have the people with the required competencies and skills to actually function and provide services to us in the city. The third is empowered and legitimate elected representatives. Do we have mayors who are directly elected, who have a longer term than 
the one that we have currently in Bangalore, who's nominated for a period of one year only. And by the time he or she understands their roles and their responsibilities and what they need to do, it's already time for them to move on. So how do you really create systems that bring in quality people, but also empower them with funds, functions, and also you give them the uh, ability to work longer. The fourth and the critical one also is transparency, accountability, and participation, both from government and also for our citizens. Right? How does government actually tell us what they're doing with the budgets that they put out every year? I would have loved to take this poll again, um, if we could speak to each other, uh, just to ask you, uh, what do you think the budget of Bangalore City is this year? I would have loved to see at least five guesses, but let me tell you, it is 10,000 crores plus. Right? So we have a budget that is very close to what Bombay has, which is about, I think this year they are at 33,000 crores. That is a lot of money that is coming into the city, right? That is a lot of money that is being thought of as being investable into the city, right? But none of us know where that money comes from. How does that money actually translate into the quality of life that you and I experience in the city? Therefore, it is very important that cities have systems that actually tell citizens how they're spending the money and in a predictable frequency, in an in a acceptable format, and at a time when you really need to use that information. And for us as citizens, platforms to engage, participate, and work in partnership with government to really fix the problem of our cities. So the city systems framework focuses more on the root causes and not really on the symptoms. The fact that we have broken roads or there is you know, sewage flowing on the streets or the lights are not working, or we have urban floods in Bangalore, which is becoming very seasonal you know, these past few years. The fact is, what we are doing is to try and fix the plumbing, which is fixing the upstream issues rather than fixing the last mile you know, symptoms that you perceive on a daily basis, which is why the city system framework becomes important. And the fact that all of them need to work together. None of these four wings of the butterfly that we call it can actually function without the other. They all need to come together to really make cities the aspirational cities that we want to see you know, in our own lifetimes and also facilitates very periodic measurement of progress. Right? So that's what we base our thinking and our projects and our programs around. We can move to the next slide, uh, um, So to do this, and while I said that we work with citizens and we work with government, for today's um, presentation, we will only speak about our work with citizens. And, and we can always at some other point speak on our work with government. Though we will touch upon a few aspects of that as we go through the examples over the course of this uh, talk. So we have two uh, key words in some sense that we uh, have at Janagraha. One is on civic learning, which Pratna will speak to you about now. And the other is on civic participation, which I will come back and step up to. Can we move on to the next slide? Thanks, Apna. Um... Um, just so, go back to the previous slide, uh, Aishwarya. Yeah, just go back to the previous slide for a second, Aishwarya. Uh, so like Sapna was saying, we deal with two stakeholder groups uh, under the citizenship piece, and one is uh, one are school children. Uh, we work with school children primarily because they're not so uh, empathetic to the idea of change in the city as adults are. So we focus on uh, behavior, on imbibing certain behaviors and attributes that sort of push them towards uh, practicing active citizenship on, as a way of life. I think uh, a lot about uh, a lot about adults today or citizens in India believe that change is impossible. That's not the mindset that children seem to come with when it comes to change, which is why we focus on uh, building those behaviors and attributes with children uh, in schools across Bangalore. I'll let Sapna take over on the civic participation part and we can come back to civic learning in a bit. Sure. Uh, Aishwarya, I think we should also uh, go with the questions that you might have that have come in from the group as we are uh, speaking through these slides. So maybe you want Absolutely. to call out. Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. I step in as and when, you know, I think the question is relevant. But, you know, as we were talking about civic participation, 
based on your experience why is it important for us to be aware of who our board counselor is and what type of oh sorry i was on mute uh yes i was saying i will pop in you know as and when there are relevant questions but based on what you told a uh, citizen based on your experience why is it important for us to be aware of who our ward councillor is i mean what type of impact does knowing these details have in a city like bangalore yeah um see i the most important thing is to understand that uh, you know in all of the uh, governance uh, systems that we are looking to fix right now they are um, they aren't a, there is no linear way to fix the supply side right which is um, actually fixing how government will uh, give it services how they will improve on what they do and there are many missions that are there in the country there are many uh, programs that are there which are facilitating or catalyzing government city governments to come together to try and create urban governance improvements but even as governments are trying to do this and are working towards that and we'll come in a little later in the conversation on why there needs to be a lot more done in on that space it is very important that the demand side right which is we as citizens actually understand our role at the local level and participate much more effectively and we can do that only if we know enough about who we are as citizens where do we reside who is responsible who have we elected and who is a person that we can actually go to with issues complaints uh, suggestions ideas and collaborations to make life better in the areas that we live in see what we must uh, remember is just look at the country we are 4500 cities and easily um, you know many of these cities are are becoming larger urban uh, agglomerations and none of them are the same i mean you all of you we have lived in bangalore at some point right you know that maleshwaram is very different from indranagar is very different from uh, vijayanagar and jayanagar and also and cambridge and so on right so neighborhoods have very um, specific and in some sense customized you know uh, problems also the political economy keep shifting in different areas therefore you we have to rally citizens together to demand for better services but in a collaborative way this is not to take on government i mean that doesn't really help in the long term but to do that we need citizenship to be a lot more than uh, what it has been but very the signs right now are very positive in terms of people coming together but this has to sustain over a longer period and on more systemic uh, issues though we are really great at reacting to uh, catastrophes calamities and even in the pandemic i mean bangalore in many ways i must tell you all for those of you who may not be very familiar and i'm sure there may be some of us on this call who are actively involved in volunteering that it it is a city that can become a beacon for active citizenship for the entire country i mean bangalore has a lot going for it you know on that front and it's it's best that we catalyze and you know actually create a lot of momentum on that uh, front in um, so i have a question this is actually one that was posted by jimmy and placeria in relation to this with the notorious level of corruption in india how can the youth see hope in making a change that affects their future yeah so right. um just i think it's so uh... yeah so i think it's directly linked to what uh, sapna was saying right we uh, bringing about uh, changes in their local community could potentially lead to a large scale change across the city right so knowing about how to fix local uh, civic problems in their communities could sort of lead to that uh, ripple and cascading effect about change in the city uh and approaching uh, coming from youth there's a very different angle uh, that is that that it comes with rather than an adult citizen taking it up uh, on a different level so if there's a pothole outside your road and a group of children go to their local corporator it's something that the corporator is forced to act upon because it's coming from a group of children or a group of youth and that's very different from a group of uh, 35 to 40 year old going and approaching uh, the corporator with the same issue but i i let uh, sapna add in on what citizens uh, look at when it comes to these issues yeah um see one things that is important for us to uh, understand is that uh, the reason there is corruption is um, fundamentally on two things one is because as citizens we are not fully always aware of what are the processes to avail services 
uh, how do you go about getting that and who's really responsible for giving that to you right so the system does not give you information in a transparent easy to access manner and makes really makes your life easy right so that's one problem and the other is compounding this is the fact that because that is in there it is easy to actually build in a lot of opacity in delivery of a system which then ultimately leads to you know the uh, setting in of more and more uh, corruption so like someone has said sunlight is the best disinfectant right so the best thing is to increase levels of transparency across services in terms of how things are done who has to do it and to hold people accountable right which means if i were to uh, i mean if you look at what happens to uh, people or officials who have let's say erred in their line of duty or have not you know accomplished uh, a task very well they may go under suspension you know uh, they may be sent on long leave but in really there are no penalties it's not like you get you know lower marks in your performance uh, you know of the year it's not like you lose certain you know perks this really nothing happens right so it's very important to create a culture of performance it's important to bring people who know what their role and their job is it's important for us to understand what our services that are available how do we actually access it and raise issues and raise complaints and talk openly about about the fact that things are not going how they should have and that is why platforms that we run become really important because they allow you to actually bring these out into the open we have to create we have to push for transparency to bring down uh, corruption at least at the retail level which is daily transactions between the city and the uh, citizen right property tax driving license passport um, pro- uh, registrations khata you know things like that getting your uh, water meter in your house you know those are the kinds of things that really irk people because you don't know where to go and how to get it done and that's Absolutely. where information awareness works yes i think that's you know what you brought up a very important point about how it's very important to be to participate but i think one question that at least comes to my mind is that what are some of the examples of the civic participation you know how how does one go about this sure um so there are many ways by which you can participate you can participate uh, actively as an individual where you uh, you actually play a role which is uh, displaying your rights and your responsibilities as a citizen and uh, you can participate in your working uh, you know space in your professional in your corporate communities and so on you can also participate in your local neighborhoods as a uh, part of a larger community so if you look at the examples of um, i would say campaigns and um, initiatives that have been run in the city not just by janagraha by us and by you know uh, many other volunteer and citizen groups that have come across the city uh, many of them are need based right when things are really going bad people will come together and in some sense sometimes take matters into their own hand but sometimes create so much noise that they tell government exactly what they are thinking sometimes come together because they want to place a need on the table so as far as yes. janagraha is concerned for uh, we have run campaigns and we still continue to do along with the city government on seeking inputs from citizens on let's say budgets where should the money actually go in my local neighborhood in my ward this year right as a part of the my city my budget campaigns we uh, run campaigns on um, asking people what should be there for the manifesto for the state and the city government you know in a particular year when they were actually you know getting uh, when we were going into elections right uh, there are groups in the city that come together to put a stop to things that they think are going to harm the environment or change the face of the city or actually completely you know are going to take away heritage and culture so whether it's the steel flyover issue whether it's the fact that uh, citizens in bangalore have been rallying around for uh, mobility and commuter rail um, looking at tree and environment related uh, you know initiatives working on lake development but one of the things that we must uh, remember is that see ideally all of this has to be done by government and they have to be done in a framework which says that okay i have a plan for bangalore this is the blueprint by which we will work to fix the city and this blueprint could take 5 years could take 10 years but i have a method and a way of being accountable to this plan and this plan actually captures all facets of civic delivery and services that are that are required in any city 
And in that, there will be different projects which will have different departments coming together, which will actually bring, you know, competencies from the private sector to really make that happen. But unfortunately, we are not seeing that actually play out in the entire country in any meaningful level for us to be able to see that okay, this engine is going somewhere right now. Therefore, it becomes even more important for us to understand what does it take to fix cities. The the most, um, I would say, negative or the completely suboptimal thing we can do is ask for fast mile fixes, is ask for just this drain to be deserted or that cover to be fixed. We have to go back and ask government, how are you spending the 10,000 crores that you budgeted for Bangalore this year? Where is that money going? I, each one of us is paying property taxes. You are collecting 3,500 crores of property tax every year. Can you tell us where that money has gone? How do we exact accountability in a manner that actually helps us help government fix the city? So that is why we have to change the way we think. The easiest thing for government and our elected representatives to do is to tell you, okay, fine, you have a complaint. Let me get that fixed for you tomorrow. So you are one person in a ward which has 50,000 citizens and you will go and ask him this today and somebody else will go tomorrow and he might end up meeting even a thousand people in his, uh, in his ward over the next one month. It doesn't still solve the problem for the balance 44,000 who are living there, right? Because remember, we don't have um, a million problems in the country and the cities. We have 100 problems magnified a million times. And it's the same problem playing out in different magnitudes in different parts of the city, which is why citizenship becomes extremely critical in linking how we ask our elected representatives to be accountable, responsible, and actually play the role that they were there for in the first place, right? Yes, I think that's um, some very good input. You know, in fact, when you said local groups participating, it reminded me of an anecdote from school. You know, uh, Joseph has always encouraged us to be conscious citizens who are aware, especially of the environment. I vividly remember going on a march around Residency Road on Earth Day with slogans to educate people about the importance of sustainable living and being environmentally friendly. This helped us understand the importance of being conscious of our use of natural resources and just in general on how and what the government is doing, which I think is very important. And I'm really grateful that, you know, Joseph took such an active part in doing something like this. But uh, this brings me to another question posted by Jimmy Antisera. Which city in India would you consider a role model for active citizen participation in engineering social change? What makes that city such a role model? Um, we still don't have a, a role model, uh, at, at least at the level of a city. Uh, there are examples of participation that are stemming across cities. We have the state of Kerala, which has been doing local level participation for many years now. I mean, over a couple of uh, decades. But um, while the techniques have really worked, and it's a great example to emulate and learn from, and which is one of the reasons we have the whole concept of ward sabhas and ward committees and you know area sabhas and all that have come through in the last you know 15 to 25 years. But the fact is that um, even in Kerala, you're not really addressing a, an urban agglomeration of the kind that is prevalent in the rest of the country. So there is no Bangalore or a Pune or a Meerut or a Chennai that is prevalent in the Kerala you know, model, which you can say has work, is working well, so you know you can apply it elsewhere. But the good thing is that um, in the last, I would say maybe uh, a decade and a little more, the awareness and the intent to participate, uh, the ability for of people to actually come and spend significant time in trying and helping cities become better has has improved and we are seeing that uh, i would say at an extraordinary scale in bangalore i mean just to give you uh, some examples and maybe if uh, some of our participants are from bangalore they may be already aware of this in the pandemic the government actually came together and ran one of the largest volunteer uh, you know programs called the corona warriors it was put together by the department of information and public relations but we have uh, they had more than 60000 applicants and we had and they had activated at least 5000 of them in the city because i think they were overwhelmed by the fact that so many people wanted to help you know 
and Pratna and I both are part of that, uh, you know, volunteering uh, team. We should everything from social awareness to distributing food to helping migrants to actually fixing technology, all kinds of things, right? But there is a certain um, altruism that stems from citizens in times of crisis, and that and that will stay for a period of time. But it's not the sustainable kind of you know volunteering and support that you want. It is citizenship to an extent, but it is not the citizenship that we are talking about right now. But the fact is, there is tremendous energy that is available for cities to capitalize on and actually use to in their favor. And that is something that even we as Janangraha are pushing you know, cities uh, to do. And that's what our various partnerships uh, with different states in the country also are encouraging our government to pick up on, you know, on bringing citizens to really make change happen on the ground. It's so good to hear that, you know, there's 60,000 signups from Bangalore alone. The, in fact, this brings me to my uh, next point, because I understand that Janagraha has also worked with current students at St. Joseph. I'm sure we'd all love to hear more about this. Anaga, if you could go to the next slide, please. Thanks, Aishwarya. So I think... Um... Yeah, skip this. You can go to the next one. Go to the poster, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, this this is the case that I uh, personally knew about. And these are just three kids from grade 8 in St. Joseph's Boys High School. They wanted to work on reducing carbon dioxide emissions because the city has become so polluted and everyone keeps complaining about the fact that it's no longer the garden city that they once knew of. Uh, so they picked up something, um, they did some uh, secondary research to find out what acetylene is and whether it can be a prototype alternate fuel to what what is currently used. They went on to implement it in an old two-wheeler that uh, the uh, grandfather had and basically their grandfather mentored them through this project and tried and uh, helped them through actually fixing that into the present two-wheeler and they managed to make it a working model. So they got to present their work at something we call a civic fest, but I think I was personally very, very impressed with the perseverance that the three kids had because they worked on this for almost two months and they managed to actually make a working model out of it. Uh, like uh, Aishwarya was saying, I think a lot of students from St. Joseph this year have actually started to move up the ladder to come up with solutions that actually sort of help them solve small problems at, at a almost scalable level. This is one of them. Uh, extremely, uh, uh, like, a lot of hard work had gone into actually building that uh, that two wheeler from nothing to an acetylene filled uh, one. That's so, a uh, really that... I think that is so great that these kids did that. But you know, what are some of the civic projects that have been undertaken in Bangalore? Are there any around our beloved Alma Mater? You know, uh, in this context, we also have a question posted by Thomas Takatella which is, don't you sometimes find the personal agenda of government officials and their preferred company's profit motives at odds with citizens' interests? How do you overcome this? Great. Um, thanks. I think we should possibly use the example of the Tender Shore project uh, to just talk about this, uh, you know, this aspect and hopefully get some answers to the question. Uh, do you want to move to the next slide? Um, so, um, Okay, so I don't know how many of you all remember these roads, but um, yeah, these are the times when I wish I could see you all and ask you all questions and, you know, wave hands and so on. This is, <laughs> but, I mean, for those of you who haven't recognized it, this is the road near Joseph's. I think you can see that little building that's on the right side of our school. But yeah, sorry, please, Sapna, go on. Yeah, so this is, uh, these are actually pictures of the Tendershaw project uh, that our co-founder, Swati Ram, Ramanathan, initiated, uh, you know, before we set up uh, our sister organization, Jana Urban Space uh, Foundation. So um, basically, this was a project to redo what we understand as roads and the fact that they are the nervous system that runs cities. And that every utility that you that comes to your home or in or what you use to get around the city actually goes through roads, right? So you have the sewer network, you have sanitation uh, lines, you have water pipelines, you have optical fiber cables, uh, you have cable networks, you have a, you have gas pipelines that are coming now. A whole bunch of utilities that actually use the road space to get around the city, right? It is also the space that we use to walk. It is also the space we use to drive or ride. But the biggest spend in the city government's budget actually goes in maintaining roads. 
So you will see, and most of you who have been here or are in the city will see that the same road is getting asphalted year on year, but roads that have not been touched for many years still continue to remain in a very poor state, right? And multiple agencies keep digging up these roads all the time. So just as when the BBMP has laid the road, the water supply board will come and dig this up again. So there is an issue of coordination, but there is also an issue of how do you design a well uh, made road, which does not have to be dug up for the next decade or so. Right? So Tendershore attempted to actually bring in the signs of good uh, road building in the city. So basically what you see is that there is a preference given for uh, pedestrians. There is a priority given for green cover. So no trees were cut during the making of any of the Tendershore uh, roads in the city. Right. So keeping the tree and getting the road to go around it in some sensible fashion, where unless where there is absolutely no choice, none of the greenery was actually impacted, you know, on these roads. So what you see on the pavement is that everything is ducted and it's under the road, right? And they had, um, you know, there are periodic or, uh, you know, openings that are there for maintenance and so on. But the interesting part of this was that, see, this is a new way of building roads. That one is that the government didn't really understand. So when Swati uh, you know, finished this design and started advocating, of course, we did a pilot on, uh, for those of you who remember, the UB city, the Vittal Malia Road, was the first pilot of Tendershwar, much before Tendershwar was even a word, you know, and a, and a brand government, which it is right now. Uh, and just to showcase that you can come together to build sustainable infrastructure, you know, that everybody can be proud of, which even looks great. You know, that has good street design and, you know, allows you to sit and walk freely and cycle and all of that. So uh, we did that and then proceeded to advocate the government that we should actually look at these standards for building roads in the city. But the thing is, uh, government is used to a certain um, way of working, right? So there are contractors that are already there, they are empaneled. And when they were given these drawings to actually execute, the fact was that many of them didn't even understand these drawings. So very few people actually even bid for uh, any of the tender sure uh, projects and it was so tightly controlled and the standards were so high that there was zero uh, leakage that was possible it took swati close to a year to get a contract assigned just to start the first phase of uh, you know implementation of these uh, roads the fact is that um, and why did this happen and there has been so much controversy around tender sure in its initial years from saying, you know, it's reducing the carriageway to saying that it's not, uh, you know, friendly for the uh, physically or the differently abled, uh, it, that it actually uh, does not provide for hawkers and, you know, uh, other street and culture, uh, you know, related elements. But all that actually is taken care of in Tendisha Roads. If you just, if one just went around and looked at how it has been made. But we have passed all of that. It all came because there are vested interests in actually getting projects from the city government. And that continues to happen because the accountability is so poor. There is no demand for audited annual uh, accounts you know, for city governments. Just like all of you who are in companies, I mean, you put out quarterly financial results. You wait for companies to tell you how they've done annually. No city government does that. Cities are not competing with each other on did I do better than Madurai on education this year? You know, who has really done well on water and sanitation projects? We don't do that in our cities because there is so much of collusion that happens, right? But that's also, see, I, neither um, we are not looking at government and people working in government as adversaries or those who are incapable of doing work. I think there is a system that has been built over the years which needs to be completely refreshed, right, and brought to, uh, to work in a way in which it actually works for the city with checks and balances, with accountability and all very stringently built in. So Tendeshwar actually challenged that status quo and therefore it took a really long time to get the first set of roads done. Of course, now it's a brand, it's noted internationally. Uh, it comes in the budget, in the Karnataka state budget. There are different cities in the country and in Karnataka that are taking up Tendeshwar roads. And yes, Residency Road, St. Mark's Road, Museum Road, all the roads around Joseph's actually were in the first phase of uh, Tendeshwar. So if you're like, coming back, you'll actually be able to now walk quite peacefully around your college. Yes, you know, in fact, I think when uh, this happened a few years ago, I was in college, I visited school and 
I was so surprised and honestly a little envious that all the Josephites then got a proper footpath to walk around because we used to do this thing when I was in school where we used to go to Juice Junction once a week and it was so hard to go by with those foot, you know, like the ro- the vehicles were on the footpath and it was really difficult. But I think you guys have done such a great job with this. It's really cool. But from whatever you said, Sapna, I also understand that, you know, there must have been a lot of grassroots level advocacy. Like, and it seems like that's rather important when you want to bring about a change like this. In relation to this, also, I have a question that I want to ask you, which was posted by Giridhar Nayak, which is, how responsive is local administration in India to civic concerns of infrastructure, public health, and civic amenities, amongst others? It's common to pra- practice to show governments in poor light. Is it lack of resources or the lack of will the biggest hurdle to bring about change in quality of life in urban India? Well, Giridhar, it's, um, it's a bit of both and a lot more of other things that actually contribute uh, to this. So yes, uh, there is there is very little understanding of how do you go and fix cities. See what we are witnessing today, and if you look at the commissioner in our commissioners in our cities, right? I mean, I'm before COVID, um, they would be firefighting all the time. So the commissioner of Bangalore really isn't sitting and looking at the next five years, uh, you know, of the city and how it will look like. He's saying, well, I have floods in one corner of the city, trees have fallen down, there is, you know, I have dengue fever to deal with. This is the kind of uh, work that they're actually faced with. Because it is compounded by the problem of low um, resources, inadequate competencies, you know, in the system. And a very low understanding of the city system's frame. And when I say that, what I mean is, what does it take to really pull our cities, you know, away from this mess and into a um, into a realm of performance and, gov- and better governance, right? And this is compounded by political will, the lack of it rather, because people don't see that there is a long-term advantage to really fixing cities, right? That it works for everybody in the long term. Right? So we run a program called, uh, or rather it's a diagnostic that we bring out every year. It's called the Annual Survey of India's City Systems, right? So we take the city systems um, frame and apply it on about 24 cities across the country, compare it to London, New York, Johannesburg, and so on. And our, the top, I think we had either Pune or Tiruvannantapuram top uh, the last uh, you know, report, but they were still at only five on a scale of 10. So can you just imagine the number of things that need to be done? And remember, A6 only measures the, it's a diagnostic on your preparedness to govern. So it is not even an outcome-oriented, uh, you know, uh, uh, diagnostic uh, tool. It's just actually to see, do you have laws, policies, statutes? Do you have budgets that are, you know, reasonable? Do you have a low budget variance year on year? You know, what are the kind, do you actually collect property tax and what is the extent of property tax or water meter connections, things like that, which actually tell you how a city is doing, right? So there is, and if unless the political establishment, unless uh, all our bureaucracy uh, and even the lower level political representatives, that is those who govern us at the lowest level, that is the ward councillor, right, who we elect at the cities, understand this framework. It is very difficult to get them to see the value of long-term uh, change, right? So political will will come when this, this frame, uh, this understanding of what are the near-term solutions, what are the medium and the long-term solutions actually are so closely linked with the vision for the uh, city. Um, so they all play in uh, together. So I don't think, and because uh, of these factors, at any given point in time, you know, there will be forces that are not interested in taking that forward because there are other priorities. So for example, if we have our city elections, which are coming up in September, with all their ability to understand this, they will only be focused on winning elections, right? And when, you, when you're looking at winning elections, everything is about perception. So what can I give the citizens now in the next six months, you know? How many roads will be asphalt? How many street lights are we going to change? Now, the fact that you're asphalting them with low quality, it's going to run off, you know, in the next monsoon, uh, all that will not even be taken into consideration. Therefore, what we are saying is on the, uh, our ability to step up and monitor works, to understand budgets, to ask for accountability, has to continue to only uh, be more in terms of magnitude and even timeliness. Because if we look at, all the issues, it's public health, it's climate change, it's environment, it's air pollution. 
none of them can be solved at a central and a state level. They have to be solved at local and sub-city levels. And that will only happen if there's greater participation among citizens at the local uh, neighborhoods, right? Okay. I think uh, it's just, I still can't get over these pictures. Honestly, it's so great that, you know, the kind of transformation that Janagraha has brought and it seems like a lot of effort and you know we're really so grateful that you guys are doing this and your work in Bangalore as a whole just sounds very interesting and impactful but you know moving on to some of the other questions posted on the Jana LinkedIn group I'm sure we all want to know how we can strive to be better citizens and civic participants are there any steps in specific that you would recommend uh, some Joseph had, had similar questions so I'm just going to go with two of them one being uh, Akila Jairam wants to know how can citizens become more involved in advocacy initiatives around civic change? Oftentimes, there is a drive to be part of the change, but people are unsure where to start or whether they can make a difference. There's also one more specific to the Jana community, which is Francis Joseph's question. Living outside India, what kind of impact can be made for such social causes? Okay. Uh, so, Prakna... And I will take uh, these questions. I'll go first and then she will you know, add in too. I think the first and foremost thing for us is to improve our uh, citizenship quotient, right? To really understand, uh, even if you're not living here, you may have family here, you have your, you know, uh, the rest of your relatives and friends and so on. Uh, getting to understand where we live, who's responsible for our governance at the local level, which agencies really matter, what are they supposed to be doing. I think that's really important. And this uh, information is available. It, it is there online uh, also. The other thing I would suggest is to please download iChain My City. Start participating in um, you know, posting complaints and actually raising issues. Uh, understand who are members in your ward committee. Every ward has a ward committee. We have 198 ward committees, which consists of over 2,000 uh, citizens who are representing the needs of a ward at the local level. It doesn't. It's a public meeting. Anybody can go for that meeting. If it is not happening, make sure you ask for that to happen. Rally people around and make sure that those meetings actually happen because they are the group that is responsible for the upkeep of infrastructure to respond to local needs and take them to the city council if that is where you know it needs to uh, go. Um, understanding who the ward committee and you can get all of this information on the iChain My City platform and also on your app. So if you download it, there is a lot of information you know that you will get. Uh, we didn't have a chance because I know we are uh, you know we're going with a very tight timeline today. Um, but if you log on to the website of uh, iChain My City, you will be able to also look at your ward budgets, at city budgets. You will be able to look at infrastructure indices in your ward. Uh, they are from a few years old, but there have been no large projects in the city that have uh, been implemented to improve their scores. So they more or less stay the same. Uh, in those scores, in terms of walkability of your footpaths, in terms of street lighting, the quality of your parks, playgrounds, and other public assets, you should understand that information and use that to actually speak at the ward committees and get them to listen to what is it that they will do with the um, work that you know all of you are interested in doing along with the citizens. Uh, we also have a program that we are running, and Sunil has uh, just responded that I should speak about public eye. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, I think my city also runs an app called Public Eye, uh, which is a part of the Bangalore Traffic Police's traffic violation capturing uh, system. Um, so uh, you can, I mean, it's a very simple app. You just point, click, shoot, post. Uh, no, they actually send you a fine and very quickly they collect it. They love the app because um, it's one of our best performing uh, tools on the product suite. People love posting uh, images and complaints on other people violating traffic rules. You know, so it works for the police because they raise a lot of chalans, they get a lot of uh, money into their kitty. So they're quite happy using this particular app. So please do that as a first step, right? Um, find out who are your local community uh, associations, resident welfare associations, apartment associations. Please work with them uh, in the spirit of collaborating uh, with the city, but also in a manner where you're raising questions, you're seeking accountability, and you want the government to give you answers to what they're really doing with the money. I keep saying this internally and to everybody I meet, that we have to follow the money. Because whatever else we do, we know that at the end of the day, if infrastructure has to be implemented, 
there has to be a project, there's a budget, there is money, there are tenders, somebody issues a work order, there's a contractor who's assigned and then work gets done. And we have to be able to monitor and track that process. From iChain Messity, we will keep providing you information that periodically is available to you on the app, which gives you how many tenders, I mean, all of that uh, silly code. But these are immediate action steps uh, that you can take uh, to be more active as a citizen in your uh, local community. And of course, just go online. There are multiple things going on with uh, different groups right now. Uh, we are also currently running a campaign uh, to crowdsource cloth masks. So those of you who are interested, please spread the word. It's there on all our uh, social media channels. Uh, just click I Change My City on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, and you'll be able to see the campaign details. Please do circulate that. Uh, we do believe that um, we will require a lot of masks for the city and for us to be safe and keep others also safe. And not everybody can afford to keep buying uh, masks. So we would like to ensure that every citizen in the city has access to one. And therefore, we are crowdsourcing it. And our volunteer team will ensure it's distributed uh, you know, to the needy. So it will be a great help if you can participate in that campaign in whatever capacity uh, that is possible from you. Um, Pratna will... So added, okay. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, somebody asked from the from North America, what can I do to sort of help? Uh, so we run a very strong mentoring program for children. Some St. Joseph's and other uh, schools, affordable private schools, uh, where we tag a mentor to a, a group of students who are undertaking the civic project. So the mentoring could be uh, technical advice as well as just communication skills and how to present their work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're trying to build a set of 21st century skills necessary for them to uh, build upon their civic learning. And it's some, it's another area we could explore uh, your support in as we move forward. That sounds uh, great, Pratna, thank you. I think we also have another question from Lloyd Lobo. Although the traffic bit is covered, let me just read out the question for you guys. A lot of issues related to quality of life are related to citizen behavior, traffic behavior, garbage disposal, public spitting, and urination. Is Janagraha involved in affecting changes in this? Also, just a heads up, I'm sorry. If you could just, you know, this will be our last question, everyone, because we're kind of running short of time. But yeah, Sapna Pratna, please go for it. Yeah, so um, even in citizenship, uh, Lloyd, we are looking at the upstream uh, issues, right? Which is if we are able to educate citizens with information, if we are able to build behaviors that are more community oriented and more city oriented, then the violations and uh, let's say the misuse of public property and anything else will actually come down. So no, we're not targeting specific campaigns on urination, public urination or spitting, though we do support uh, the beautiful Bengaluru group on their campaign, which is to completely rule out spitting across the country, starting with Bangalore. So Odette and Aparna are running a campaign and uh, it's actually, uh, it reached uh, even the prime minister. So he did speak about it too, and it was covered you know, extensively here. So in that regard, we are a platform that aggregates and allows everybody and anybody to really use iChain My City for their own needs. So we really don't want to own it in that sense. And it's really your platform uh, to use. So I will just stop by saying that we would like to build positive citizenship behaviors, which will ultimately take care of the problem so that you don't need government to really enforce anything. And even if nobody's standing at 5 a.m. at a four I know, road traffic signal with a red light on, you will actually wait for it to change and only then cross the road. That sounds absolutely amazing. And I think the first thing I'm going to be doing is download the app because it sounds so great. To summarize, uh, I would one of you just you know point out three takeaways that uh, Josephites can contribute to their home city. Arna, do you want to take that? Yeah, so I think uh, one is to uh, we are hyper local. We believe in local change. I think if you can spread the word about uh, I change my city and several other portals with your people in India and get them to be the the change in their local community, it will go a long way. The second is help us mentor kids uh, and get them to be active in their local communities, thereby changing the landscape of the city as we move forward. And the third is, I think, a lot of awareness about uh, 
a lot of things that we do in general will go a long way, whether it's participation there, whether it's participation here, whether it's the spread of uh, knowledge and about campaigns or what they could do. It need not be Janagrahas, like Sapna was saying, anything that they can do to contribute will definitely, definitely make the city better uh, going forward. Sapna, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I, I mean, just as a last signing off thing, I think as uh, we have to walk the talk, there's just no other way to do this, right? So if each one of us uh, does what we can in our capacity, then we'll just create uh, a nice groundswell of people who will do a lot more for the city. So yes, so that's all I have to say. Well, uh, thank you so much, Sapna, fellow Josephites. That is, you can listen to our Jana speaker series on our podcast channel, Jana Connect, on Apple and Spotify. I will now hand it over to Thomas. Thank you, Sapna, Pratna, and Aishwarya. You know, I can't get over the real impact you guys are driving in our beloved city of Bangalore. Uh, you're demonstrating that real change is possible uh, with this sort of grassroots effort. Uh, kudos to you guys. And uh, I hope all of us here in North America can get the word out uh, and can, um, you know, sort of create this groundswell uh, to make the changes in the city we love so much. Thank you again. So uh, there have been many inquiries about entrepreneurship. Uh, among the Josephites here in North America. So we are, as uh, we've mentioned before, launching the entrepreneurship program. Uh, for all of you who have either your own startups or you're planning a new startup, and who better to kick off the entrepreneurship program than the one and only Sabir Bhatia, founder of Hotmail. So he will be the next speaker in three weeks' time, January 27th, at the same time, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific. And Sabir will address the top five or seven things that any startup or group of founders need to focus on to create a successful startup. Startup. I think it's gonna be a real cracking event and I look forward to everyone's participation. Uh, so as I said, uh, you know, we've got several programs, the speaker series, the mentor program, the entrepreneurship program, uh, Jana Connect, the Jana Endowment. Uh, we're looking for volunteers. Uh, you could always uh, sign up with hashtag vol Jana Volunteer on the LinkedIn group. With that, I turn it back to the Josephite girls to set the tone for the school song. Uh, over to you guys. His heart is well with the forest and with our deep well uh 
it sounded like we were trying to combine a video and people singing at the same time. Uh, uh, well, it, it kind of, I, I, the audio wasn't as clear as we would like to have had it, no worries. Uh, anyone, anyway, thanks a lot for joining and we will see you all uh, in three weeks time. Of course, uh, please post your comments on LinkedIn about this session, any other session, and you can get a recording on Jana Connect. Uh, thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.